So it's going to be us threading the needle a little bit better this week. Let's start with the first game. Raiders Bears. Ugh. Snorefest. I mean, uh, what else is going to be? It's, 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 it's probably a snorefest. Early morning, London type, London game. Once again, the Bears. I, I don't know about y'all. I lost money in the Bears because Justin Fields goes out, which means he's not going to score points last week, which means DJ yeah. Moore is not going to get the rock. And that's all been a problem. So you got the Bears Raiders this week again, a snore fest. But the Raiders favoring this game by two and a half. The over under is 37 money line, minus 145 for Vegas, plus 120 for Chicago. Again, how is Justin Fields going to be? What's his situation? I'll start with you, Barrett. What are you looking at in that game? Uh, not really. I, I, I'm trying not to, but I, I, I do like Devontae Adams. Um, I think he will have over, what is it, uh, 68 and a half. I think he will have over that. Um, I, I, this is such a finicky team when you think about the talent that they have there. I mean, Jacobs is is is, is underperforming at this point, you know I mean? So, but I, I do like Adams, you know, I, I like his over. I'm going with the over with that. Other than that, there's nothing else. I mean, I mean, I wish there were – a lot more defensive stats we can go through because, you know, Max is playing at a high level. But other than that, man, it's just, you know, Jacoby Myers is a guy that you look at who's been balling. But, I mean, I can't go week to week with him. So it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be tough for me to bet on that game just because the Bears, is, you know, you don't know what you're going to get from the Bears. You don't know what you're going to get from the Raiders. Yeah, what you yeah got? I mean, I think it's just hard to not take the Raiders in this spot. Um, Not so much like giving props to the Raiders, but more so it's how can you argue for the Bears covering even just a small two and a half point spread. Sorry, Kevin. I know that they're your team. They're in a rough, like you, I didn't think that the Bears could get any more worse off. And then, you know, here we are. Um, So not only will they be without field too, I lost money on him in week six as well, because I bet uh, fields over rushing yards. They're also going to be missing Khalil Herbert, I believe. Uh, they have a backup quarterback. I know Garoppolo has been, like, he's injured. I don't know if he's definitely not playing or not yet, but I I just don't see – there's too much working against the Bears to, to confidently say, oh, yeah, they can cover that two-and-a-half-point spread. So I'm taking the Raiders. Um, I was looking at DJ Moore receiving props, though, for the Bears. Uh, I didn't see them up on BetMGM just yet. But I will keep an eye on that. And Barrett, I like your uh, Devontae Adams over receiving yards as well. I, I just don't see. I don't have any faith in Garoppolo, man. Even if he is playing, I don't have any faith in Garoppolo. And Brian Hoare has been playing. He's out, Barrett. He's out. Oh, he's definitely out? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, Hoare has probably been playing just as long as I had. You know, he probably played, you know, a couple of years when I was playing there. You know what I'm saying? He's old as hell. So, but at this point, I, I, I think he will get the rock. He will get the rock, you know what I'm saying, to, to Devontae Adams for sure, you know. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Yeah, again, kind of I mean, what, what, it's a slop fest. What, it's garbage. It's garbage game, right? And, again, I like the Bears because I thought the Bears, if Justin Fields stays healthy, wins last week, and I think they win this week. If Justin Fields is there and healthy because, again, the two games prior to that, they won that one game. Then the game prior to that, I believe it was the – uh, Arizona game where they let up a lot of points, but scored 28 points. Chicago Bears offense was starting to turn things around before uh, before Justin Fields got hurt. So that's tough. But now that you have a game of backups, uh, whether it's Aiden O'Connell or Brian Hoyer, Hoyer, doesn't matter. That's a bad game to look at. Justin Fields being out of the game, having the backup quarterback. It's two bad situations. I mean, how angry are you with Devontae Adams? I mean, there's, there's rumors of places of him saying, I would rather play here, I'd rather play there. Right, like you're, you're talking about a top five wide receiver in the game now being reduced to nothing because of well, terrible they, quarterback play. They sent it. I mean, and also they sent his quarterback away. You know what I'm saying? We watched his quarterback last, you know, the other day. We watched him the other day. <laughs> and at this point, you know, I'd be kind of mad that you sent my college. I went back to reunite with my college quarterback. And then I get here, play with him one year, and then you sent him away. And bring me wow. Garoppolo. Are you kidding me? I'd be pissed off too. He had to admit that was a mistake too. He shouldn't have went and played with his college quarterback. Hey, it's <laughs> hey, I know college was fun. We all want to relive our college days, but Derek Carr ain't that in the NFL. So he should have definitely picked another spot outside of the Raiders to go to. 
in the first place. He, he, he set himself up a little bit. Bad football, bro. That's all you can say is just bad football. In, in Vegas, bad football. You know, when you think about, you know, the quarterback situation there, it's just, I don't know, man. They, it's, it's a clown show. It's a clown show. Yeah, it's it's too bad football. I, I, I was going to say to you guys, uh, let's get to some better things, but we, we get some, it's slightly better. Browns, Colts. Now, the Browns, again, coming off a tremendous, tremendous win. Uh, facing the Colts, who, again, their quarterback, Anthony Richardson, so sad he's going to be out for the season, which is going to be a lifelong lesson t- to himself to freaking protect himself. Stop trying right, to truck people because right. <laughs> this is the NFL. They hit harder than them college cats hit. But it's Browns, Colts, Browns favored in this game, minus three, of course, coming off that 49er win, over under 41, money line, uh, Cleveland 155, Indy 130. Dev, we'll start with you on this one. What do you see out of this game? Uh, I mean, I like the Browns winning this one. They had a really impressive showing against the 49ers. They kept the 49ers to 17 points. Like, that's really impressive given what the 49ers have done so far this season. Uh, You know, I know Christian McCaffrey went out with an injury, and that takes away some of the formidable aspects of that Niners Mm -hmm. offense. But still, you have to give props where where props are due to this Browns defense. That I feel like is still a little bit – undervalued like no one's really talking about them too too much uh and I get you know the bigger story is who their quarterback is going to be um with Deshaun Watson kind of being injured and questionable each week I think in this matchup the Browns just have have the edge they have their run game Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt scored last week uh, Amari Cooper had over 100 yards, even with that 49ers defense covering him. You think this Colts defense is going to be able to do much better? So I just think the the Browns have way too much working in their favor. Um, if, if the Colts have anything going for them, it's that Jonathan Taylor seems to be getting going a bit more uh, now that he's settling in and kind of adjusting back into the league. So if you wanted to do a prop involving Jonathan Taylor, like any anytime touchdown, he saw more carries. Um, but I like the Browns winning and covering those three points. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. Same thing, you know, you're right about that. Mari Cooper, uh, you know, you can't really see the numbers now, but I mean, I see Cooper going over 100 yards, even if they have, you know, the backup quarterback and Thomas Robinson in there. He felt very, you know, he looked very comfortable out there. Um, this offensive line is one of the best offensive lines in the league, and they could run the rock. So when you have Kareem Hunt and Ford, both of those guys, you know, that's a nice little mix of, of, of power and, and, and shiftiness and, you know, in their running game. So I like that. Um, I just don't like Indianapolis at this point. You know, with Garner Minshew, he just doesn't seem like he can be a starting quarterback anymore. He's a guy to come in like a spot type of guy. But I mean, was it 180, 180 something as far as, you know, uh, receive, I mean, uh, passing yards? To me, he's just, he's just not that guy, man. He's just not that guy. He, he, he doesn't work well within the system, you know, that, that Shane Steichen has. You know, have, I know they brought him in to be a starter, you know, but I just can't see him. I, I don't see him being that guy at this point. He's got a real nice receiver, Michael Pittman Jr., but he just doesn't seem to use him as much. So, you know, I, I can't see them. I, I, I would definitely go with, you know, the Browns with the points easily with that because they're not gonna be able to score on that defense the browns are gonna smash the colts i think we're being too nice right now <laughs> it's it's gonna it's going to be a, a a a destruction type of game three points are you serious after what that defense that defense look incredible against the 49ers but that just gave them the spotlight their defense has looked that incredible all year long with Deshaun yes. Watson coming back, he got all the practice reps on Friday. He's going to play. Now, he may be a little bit rusty, so I'm not sure if I would take any wide receiver props or Deshaun Watson props. But with the defense that they have and the running that games that they have, yes, I'm going to take a couple overs. Hey, Kareem Hunt, those guys going over 50 yards or going over 60 yards. Gardner Minshew, 193 and a half. That's under, baby. That's under. Like, Gardner <laughs> Minshew hasn't looked great all season long. So he maybe had a season there, a game here, a game there, where he's looked decent when he's got into the game. But with Miles Garrett and what they're doing and, and how they held a 49ers defense, I know Brock Purdy ain't, you know, a superstar or anything like that. But Kyle Shanahan is usually the, able to run it up on people. So if Kyle Shanahan was able, wasn't able to do that against this Browns team, despite injuries, I don't think this Colts team is going to be able to do anything. 
at all. So, again, I love the Browns to win in this game solidly. Again, it's going to be hard with particular player props being that Deshaun is coming back and wide receiver props, but I love the Browns to win this solidly. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to player props in this game, just know that uh, Amari Cooper over 100 yards against the 49ers. Uh, the Colts defense have allowed 99-plus rating to wide receivers so far this season. So I think it could be a, a game through the air for those Browns receivers. Well, yeah, N- Njoku, N- Njoku, that when you got tight ends, the tight ends is a, is a quarterback's best friend. So look at his numbers too. You, know, you might get mm. some value out of his numbers also. Yeah, you can see some overs on that. The Bills Patriots. First off, let's start with, with this before we even start with this game, because there's rumors of internal talk when it comes to ownership with Bill Belichick and how long Bill Belichick will actually be here because it looks flat out terrible in New England. B. Brooks, starting with you, before we even get to the game, if I gave you an over-under on seasons left for Bill Belichick and I said, we'll, we'll, I'll do one, one season, and that counts this season, you're going over or under Bill Belichick one more season with the New England Patriots. I, I'm going under. I'm going under simply because if it's word getting out that Belichick that uh you know he's 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 under the under the knife right now, you know, they're looking at him, hey, they're about to cut him, then I'm gonna say, yeah, you know, it, that's that's something that he's allowing to get out. You know, he's the great or- you know, architect as far as getting the information out that he wants out. I don't think he wants to coach that team anymore you know what i'm saying i mean at this point you know he he might have been he's, he's he's kind of at a point where why do it now you know what i'm saying i mean he's done everything you needed to do as a coach he's not getting the same talent he's you have, nobody fears him anymore so why keep you know why keep coaching at this point so i mean i i can't see him going another year uh you know with being less than what he's capable of being or what he's been for a long time i can't see him you know staying around Deb, what you think? Over under one year for uh, Bill Belichick? Ooh, I don't know. Because we, we were talking about this last week, and wasn't it he wanted to hit a certain amount of wins? I forget what the number was, but he would probably need at least, at the rate that they're going right now, he'd probably need at least three more seasons to hit the number. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was, but I think it was 16 not, or 18 to pass yeah, out. Yeah, I think it was 18. I, that sounds right. I, it, if it's not his choice, like if he's – fired then i would say under if it is his choice and i would say i would give him like three years <laughs> i just don't because he's such a competitor yeah. and he's he's such a hardo like i can't see bill belichick going down without a fight you know he's not the type of guy who i see really rolling over look as someone who had to just as we all had to watch the patriots and tom brady and bill belichick and their dynasty for seasons and seasons and seasons just endless wins endless rings endless trophies like i'm not mad about it the every the mighty always have to fall so and now we know that bill belichick isn't the same without tom brady see i I, again i think he has something to prove now that people are saying that so i think again i'm i've been on this the whole time i think he leaves but he's not done i think he should go to the chargers all right let me bring a defense and some good coaching to Justin Herbert in that offense and see if y'all think it's just Tom Brady. I think I think because of that, again, it's 17 wins to Ty Shula, 18 to uh, pass him. That's what I would do if I was Bill Belichick. Say, I'm going to bring this somewhere else, probably try to win a championship somewhere else because I don't want that final critique, that final Tom Brady critique on my resume, just as a competitor in myself. So that's the spot that I think he should do. So I'm with you guys. I think it's going to be under when it comes to Belichick continuing to coach the New England Patriots, but I think it's over for his coaching career. I think he moves on and does something else. With that said, the actual game, it's eight and a half, the biggest spread, I believe, in the entire league this week. The Bills uh, over the Patriots at New England, over under is 40. If you want to bet New England potentially win this game outright, again, there were a lot of upsets last week. So, you know, maybe you think this would be the upset this week. I don't think so. Plus 310 money line for the New England Patriots. Uh, Deb, we'll start with you. What, what are you looking at to bet in this game? I like the Bills. I like the Bills uh, minus eight and a half. I like them covering that. They're, the Bills are likely my pick for a survivor pool, survivor pool this week. Can't speak. Um, I just don't think it's a fair matchup. And you look at historically the Bills and Pats. The Pats have only beat the Bills once in since tom brady left literally since 2020 
they the Bills are six and one against the Patriots. Uh, and I don't think that history is going to change this time around either. Um, you also look at the matchups like that Bills offense. I get, you know, Josh Allen has his moments that make you question him. But then you look at the other side of the ball. You got Mac Jones. You know, Josh Allen has Stefan Diggs. He's had over 100 yards in five of his last six games. And then you look at the Pats defense and what they're giving up lately uh, in terms of receivers. So I just don't think that it's it's a fair matchup. I think the Bills are going to blow out the Patriots in this one. Mm. What you got, B. Brooks? I, I feel the same way. You know, I got to go with the Bills and I'm going with all their players going over, you know, Gabe Davis. <laughs> you know oh. what I'm saying? I mean, 34 and a half. For every single yeah, offensive yeah, player on the Yeah. So, just, I mean, <laughs> It's going to be a, a travesty, you know. I mean, I, probably the only bet that I would I would go with from a, a Patriots standpoint is Zeke Elliott, nine and a half rushing yards. I mean, that's an easy bet. That's easy money right there. But, but I mean, you just it's it's going to be a long day, a long day for uh, you know, what I mean? for the Patriots as a whole. You know, I mean, the way that defense is playing right now with the Bills. Uh, I, I can't see any other way but them just getting smashed. You know, even even Juju Smith Schuster, I can't see him getting over twenty four and a half. I just can't do it. You know, he's not going to show up, and you know, I still got a, a little bit of a you know a little bit of a heater off from what he did at the Super Bowl and all the antics afterwards. You know, so I don't like him anyway. So I'll go with the under with him anyways. But yeah, it's just going to be a bad day for Patriot fans. Bad day. Okay, so let me ask you this, right? If I'm gonna give y'all a Sean Bell same game parlay real quick, okay? Of course, presented by Bet MGM. James Cook, Cook 52 and a half. The Bills will go over with eight and a half. And again, Matt Jones will go under 177 and a half because he's been bitched twice. This be, could be another game that he gets bitched. If I was to give you that same game parlay, what would y'all say? Uh, I would take it. I would take it. I would take it also. I would take it also. It's just when you're so confident in a domination like we are, why not take the, all all the things that lead to domination in this game? So that's uh, sort of where I'm I'm leaning towards. And again, I think we're all on the Bills, and I think we're all on the Bills to win handily. So that one's pretty easy to pick. Let's go to the yeah. next game: Commanders, Giants. Commanders, uh, obviously, it's at New York, but the Commanders. Uh, have it uh, minus three. The over under is 37 and a half. Money line 150 for Washington, 125 for the New York Giants. The New York Giants are they're putrid. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they're putrid. That's all you can say about that squad right now. While the commanders are competitive, they're three and three. Sam Howell, when he looks good, he looks really good and they win. When he looks bad, they are terrible. Now, I'm just happy because the uh, Win total for the Washington Commanders was six and a half to start the season. I picked the over on that. So I'm feeling good about that situation just because the Commanders beat good teams. So we'll start with you, Dev. Again, what do you see in that game? What do you like for bets? Do the Giants even have a smoking chance in hell? Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, you talk about the loss of Daniel Jones, who I don't believe is expected to play again this week with his uh, neck injury. So that's just even more of a disadvantage uh, to the already disadvantaged uh, New York Giants in this one. Um, I think this is a good spot for a get right game for the Washington Commanders. Terry McLaurin also plays very well against the Giants. Um, and the spread isn't that big. Like, I, I think Washington can easily cover win and cover those three points. I think they win by a touchdown, not just a field goal. Mm, yeah, that, that, I, I think the same that. thing. I mean, they're, they're coach better also. You know, so I, I just think they're bringing things together. They're learning how to, you know, the office is learning how to run uh, with with the system that they have uh, with Eric Bieniemy and how he's, you know, he's got, you know, Sam Howell playing at a high level. So as they go forward, you know, it's only going to get better. Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin, um, Curtis Samuel. I mean, that's that's a nice little trifecta of, of receivers, you know, that Howell can get to, and he's and he get the ball out of his hands quick, you know, so they don't have to protect as much now so uh you know I, I would i would go with the i would go with the points and and you know go with commanders in in this game yeah i like i and again this is crazy because i i'm with I'm, we're all on the same page once again we haven't really gotten to the controversial games yet but last week i had saquon barkley win me some money 
because it was one of those things like Daniel Jones is on, out, Saquon got to go, right? And they mm-hmm. got to force him to fit, force feed him the rock a little bit. And they had to do that. And Saquon was able to have some breakout runs at the end of last game or, in order to get him over 90 yards. So I actually think that's a pretty good bet to have. Again, Saquon Barkley rushing total 63 and a half. I'm going to go over on that because, again, I think Saquon is going just, you know, 20 carries, especially if it's within two scores or, or 17 points, he's going to get the rock. Saquon Barkley, over 20 and a half in the receiving game also. I just, again, they're going to force feed that man the rock and say, Saquon, you got to do something. You got to be our savior. And again, they were competitive last week without Daniel Jones in the lineup. So I like that also. I'll say from a future aspect, do you guys think the commanders have a playoff shot? How do, how do you feel? I'll start with you on Barrett on this. How do you feel about the commander's competitiveness to get into the playoffs after um, sort of getting close last season, hovering around 500? Not sure what, what it's going to take this year in the NFC because it's not like anyone's blowing things away, but 10 wins could get you in. Do you think the commanders can get that? I don't because, you know, I mean, you would have to take down one of the, one of the um, you know, people in division like either the Eagles or you have take down Dallas. And, and I, I don't think that they're built well enough right now to really be a major factor in the division when you got Philly and the Dallas, uh, you know, competing way there. Cause I, mean, I think that they'll be, the Eagles will beat them twice. And I also think that uh, Dallas will beat them twice also. So that kind of, you know, puts them in four losses right there. And uh, you know, three and three right now, I just don't see them being that competitive to win 10 games. Dad, yeah. It's, it's hard to say. Like, I almost feel like the Commanders are like a quarterback away from from being a, a consistent playoff team. Like, they do have the pieces. Like, they have Terry McLaurin. They have they have good offensive guys. Their defense is pretty solid for the most part. It's just like Sam Howell is your quarterback. I don't see a team with Sam Howell at the helm, you know, <laughs> going far. But look, we all said that about Brock Purdy in the 49ers last season too. And then look how far right. he went. And- they're doing now so you never know right now and I I agree with Barry like you're competing with the Eagles who went to the Super Bowl last year and the Dallas Cowboys so like it makes it pretty tough to make it far if you do make the postseason uh if you're the commanders so not right now but maybe in the future okay the next question I'll ask again we got about two and a half more minutes Saquon Barkley there's been rumors about potentially getting off of him trading him at the they're not going to franchise tag him at the end of this year he's going to be out Saquon says he wants to stay in New York, but I also think he's just saying that because he wants to control his own destiny. If you're the New York Giants, would you trade him and how much would you need to trade him? I don't know, Barrett, do you want to answer first or do you want? Yeah, I, I, I don't, at this point, you know, his trade value, running back trade value is not at all time high. We, we know that. But Saquon is, a, is an interesting guy because he has all the intentions would be great. You know, if he had – imagine Saquon behind the Eagles offensive line or maybe, you know, behind the Browns offensive line. You know, they, he could really, really be a productive guy in that offense. He's, he's being overused, really, in with the Giants organization because they just have too much. They have too much um, – they, they put too much on this table. They, 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 they require too much of him to, you know, really be the guy, the only guy in that offense to, to really be a major factor. So, I mean, I, I just can't see him staying there. But they'll, you know, they'll, they'll – his trade value won't be as high just because he's a running back. But I think they'll let him walk and, um, you know, got, not get any value from him. I just don't see what trading Saquon Barkley would, I mean, to, to help himself in his career, like, sure. I think a player like Saquon, I was surprised to see, he said, I mean, I get, he probably has to say he doesn't want to be traded from the team that's currently giving him his paycheck, but like it's Daniel Jones and the offensive line and a lot more issues that run deeper than, you know, Saquon Barkley. And I know it's like, okay, then maybe we just start over and tank if you're the giants, but I don't know. I, I just don't see, like, if I'm the Eagles, yes, Saquon Barkley is really talented, but is it worth what you'd have to give up and what you'd have to pay him in the running back market these days? Probably not. Um, they can't stay healthy. And I hate to say that because I think that, you know, all positions should be valued. But if I was Saquon, I would not want to stay with the Giants. I'll leave it at that. But I don't know what else they can do to help their situation at the moment. 
Saquon should get me out of this hellhole, please. <laughs> I got to go. This is the worst offensive line ever. Trade me. That's all I know. If I was Saquon, I went out. Let's continue with some of our best bets in the games that we're going through. The next game that we're going to go through is the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Tampa Bay. The Atlanta Falcons 3-3, three and three, Buccaneers 3-2. Three and two. Tampa Bay favoring this game 2.5. Over-under is a low over-under, only 37 points. I guess when your quarterback is Desmond Ritter and Baker Mayfield, you don't think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. Money line for Atlanta, 145. Tampa Bay, plus 120. B-Books, we'll start with you. What do you like in this game? I like, at the very least, that the Atlanta Falcons seem to be opening the offense up a little bit more. So you can count on some of their player props a little bit more than you did before in Desmond Ritter for throwing for more yards than you did before. What do you like from this, B-Brooks? Well, they have to open it up. You know what I'm saying? I always say the quarterback loves tight ends. That's their best friend, big targets, you know, and Kyle Pitts is becoming more and more of a target. Uh, I like him to have over 32 and a half yards receiving. Um, I mean, I think that's a safe bet. I've, I'm, I'm tiptoeing around Bijan Robinson and, and 25 and a half yards receiving because, you know, like I said, they're opening it up a little more and you know, his screen game or getting it out on a little – dump off passes. I think he's going to start using him a little more as far as the safety valve. So I'm, I'm tear tattering on, on really going with 25 and a half with B. John Robinson also. But I mean, I, I think that's a safe bet, safe bet. Who do you like in the game? I'm definitely going with the Falcons right now. Cause I think the Bucks have kind of, they've kind of outplayed their potential, you know, cause at this point, you know, they, they showed everybody, all right, you know, Baker Mayfield is Baker Mayfield. You know, he, they're playing for Baker Mayfield. Well, all that's – I think that's over with now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They see that he is just a guy. He is not anything special. So I think they kind of, you know what I'm saying, outplayed the magic of ba Baker Mayfield. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going with I'm going with the Falcons. Okay, Deb, what you got? This game's really tough for me uh, in terms of like picking a side, just because both of these teams have been so inconsistent. Um, so, I, like, I think if I had to pick a side, I would I would take the Bucks minus two and a half because even though their defense has been pretty inconsistent, and I don't trust Baker Mayfield, I also don't like Desmond Ritter as a quarterback, and we know that the Falcons don't play as well uh, when they're away from home, which they will be. Um, I do disagree with Barrett on one thing he said, and that is Kyle Pitts. I'm actually going to fade Kyle Pitt props in this Ooh. one because the Bucks defense, Whoa. if they are consistent at anything, it's holding opposing tight ends to pretty low ratings. Um, however, the Bucks secondary did give up, give up 353 yards and two touchdowns to Jared Goff and the Lions last week. So uh, Drake London has been doing pretty well. He had 125 receiving yards last week. So I like Drake London props. Um but other than that, and like Bijan Robinson, you mentioned, he's been pretty underwhelming recently. So I don't feel super confident, you know, taking him in a lot of bets either. Um, what I do feel confident in is Bucks winning this one, Drake London having a game for the Falcons. That's tough because, again, last week, like you said, Drake London, 100, 125 yards was, you know what I mean, absolutely balling. Like I said before, Desmond Ritter and the offense are trying to open things up. Kyle Pitts, six targets, 43 yards, a touchdown last week. So after the first three weeks, they weren't trying to use him. It was abysmal. They weren't even looking his way. Now, over the last couple of weeks, they have really looked to throw things out to him. Uh, Drake London, if you want to go 100 yards, that's plus 600. So would any of you take that? My man, my man, Kev put yes. that out there. Would you? Oh, less. Okay, you, Deb, you said <laughs> that with conviction. You were like that. That not even close. You don't plus, even think it comes 600? close. Plus six hundred. Plus six hundred. Plus six hundred value. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you, well, you say you would take the Bucks, it. I would. The Bucks have a good run defense okay. as well, so I don't think and. B. John Robinson and the Falcons run game hasn't been as dangerous as a lot of people expected them to recently. So I would have more confidence taking, you know, receiving props and rushing props for the Falcons offense. And would you not? Do you been disagree? No, nah, I'm with you. I'm uh, with you on that. No, I'm with you on that. I, I like I, Kyle Pitts I, also, though. But see, I can't go, I can't go with uh I, I can't I can't go with 
you know, the rushing yards, Bijan, you know, 54 and a half, and then Tyler um, Al- Algier, uh, 36 and a half. But I will go with, like I said, receiving yards with Bijan simply because he's going to be a guy that's going to be that safety valve, that dump off, you know, and that's where he's going to be a special player with being a little dump off. All right, get it to him quick, and then, you know, he, he does what he does out in space. Um, I, I really like Kyle Pitts because, number one, Ritter is starting to build that chemistry with him. You know, as the season goes on, you can see things are starting to work out between the two of them, you know. So I think I, that's why I'm a little bullish on uh, Kyle Pitts right now. What, what's, you know, again, I, I think I, this game is going to be a tough game. I, I go back and forth. I think I'm going to pick Atlanta in this game, although it's not a confident game. So if I'm actually going to make a bet, I think Atlanta will win, but I'm only on goal based off player props. I like the Drake. I'm not going to go on who actually wins. I'm going to go on Drake London. I'm with Dev on that, although I'm also with uh, Kyle Pitts getting over 32 and a half. I think those will be the two main targets. What's frustrating for me is fantasy owners of B. John Robinson have to be frustrated. Because you don't know, like, yeah. Ty- Tyler Algier may be well, getting the rock more than on him. him. I'm pretty sure he's ruined, like, several same-game parlays that I've put in recently. Oh, no so question. I feel yeah. like I'm just like, staying away from B. John Robinson. <laughs> you just don't know how much he's going to get the rock too with how much he's splitting it with Tyler. It'd be one thing if he was, if they said you are our main back and Tyler's going to spell you, but it's been okay. Tyler won maybe one game. Bijan gets 18 carries, but then the next game he'll get 10. Yep. So- <laughs> exactly. It's almost like, and I know we'll get to the Eagles Dolphins game later, but with the Eagles, it's like each game, they seem to focus on a different offensive player where it's like, DeAndre Swift gets the ball a million times one game, then Kenny Gainwell, and then Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. So, like, you, just, it's hard to bet because you don't know, you know, which game is going to be the Devontae Smith game. So you don't know which game is going to be the Bijan Robinson game with this Falcons offense. So it's just hard to include them, especially in a parlay where it can mess everything up. Mess everything up. Let's go to the next game. <laughs> From experience. Uh, more <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. We are. You're losing bets. We shouldn't be losing. Let's go to the next game. Lions Ravens. That should be a great game. Lions. Like six weeks in, they are tied for the best record in the entire league with, I believe, five teams. So that's impressive in itself. Facing a, a really good Ravens team. Although the Ravens have been a little bit disappointing to me, even though they're four and two, they haven't looked as explosive as I thought. It's in Baltimore, so the Baltimore Ravens are favored by three. Over under 43. Money line is minus 155 for Baltimore, plus 134 Detroit. Dev, we'll start with you on this one. Who do you like? Who do you not like? This is going to be a good game. I am excited for this game. Um, I like the Lions winning um, and covering, or at least covering the three point spread because they're not favored in this one. Um, I don't know. Do we know a status of Jameer Gibbs yet? I know he, like, there was questions about him playing and without David Montgomery, that obviously changes the Lions' offense a bit. Um, but I mean, I just think Jared Goff and, and his multiple offensive weapons, you know, even if he doesn't have his running guys like David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, he has Amon Ross St. Brown, who had over 120 yards and a touchdown, Sam Laporta over 54 yards. Uh, Jamison Williams is back. So the list goes on there where you look at the Ravens and they are still suffering from some injuries. Um, Lamar Jackson taking on a lot of the workload himself, running the ball, you know, it's great. And he can put the wheels on. He had 62 yards rushing in week six. Um, He leads the team in rushing yards, which isn't a surprise, but it's also like, Mm -hmm. how far can that get you against a Lions defense? Um, And the spread just isn't very large. So I like the Lions covering that three point spread. Okay. What you what you got on this, uh, B. Brooks? I'm the same way. You know, I, I'd say that the Lions, they're going to cover the three. Uh, they're just a better team than the Ravens. Right now, the Ravens have too many injuries um, and have, don't have that chemistry with the wide receivers. You know, Odell Beckham, I thought he was going to be a little something, you know. I, I, I can't trust him, you know. So even at only 22 and a half yards, it's hard for me to go with the over, uh, you know, with, with, with um, you know, with going with him. Um, I, I, I think a safe bet is to go with uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Even at 70 and a half is a safe bet because he always seems to find him. He loves, you know, getting it to him. So um, I think that's a safe bet. Nelson Aguilar, he's mm, becoming a guy that, go there. You know, he's becoming a guy that I could, I, I could take 22 and a half with him instead of, you know, Odell. 
you know, so I would go with the over with him and, and always, you know, Mark Andrews when it comes to the chemistry that he, that, um, you know, he has with, you know, with the quarterback 52 and a half. That's to me, that's a safe bet. That's an easy bet. That's funny because I was going to go with Nelly too. I was going to go with Nelson Aguilar also. If you monitored him over the last couple of games, he's been sort of their deep threat. And now, yep. don't, don't get me yep. wrong, he's not getting 90, 100 yards, but he's been consistently getting, you know, 40 to 60 spot, right? They've been consistently looking for him to be the deep threat on the entire field for the Baltimore Ravens to sort of hopefully op- open some things up for Lamar Jackson. So at 22 and a half, I think he can get that off of one catch. So uh, I also like Nelson Aguilar based on the last couple of games of being the one deep threat. Again, especially because Baltimore ain't focusing on Nelson. They focus in on the other guys. They focus in on Zay Flowers. They focus focus yep. on the tight yep. end over there. So I like that game, too. Again, this is going to be a tough game to bet. This is going to be a tough game to pay attention to. I like – I think I'm going to go – it could be a 21-20 to 20 type of game. I think I'm going to go to Baltimore to win that game. But I, the, the props that I'm going to really pay attention to are Lamar Jackson, 55-and-a-half, rushing the ball, and uh, – and um, my man uh, Nelson Aguilar, 22 and a half uh, when it comes to receiving. Everything else I don't feel super confident in because I think it's going to be a super, super, super tight game. Don't sleep on Mark Andrews, man. I'm telling you. That's Jackson's I, favorite. I bet target, him bro. almost every – yeah, I lost money on Mark Andrews last week. So I, was just, <laughs> I always bet him to be a little too much. Listen, this game, let's go to Steelers Ram. The Steelers – Three and two Rams, three and three. The Rams favored in this game, minus three. The over under 44. Rams minus 165, pit 140 when it comes to the money line. Bree Brooks will start with you. What do you see out of this game? What do you like? Uh, you know what? I, I still don't know what the Steelers' identity is. Um, I don't see the physicalness I saw, you know, with them being able to do what they do. I mean, even running the ball, Najee Harris has been almost an afterthought. You know, and, I, you know, you would think that with a Steelers team, the 52 and a half rushing yards would be a lock for your starting running back. But I, I can't think that's I don't think that's a safe bet. So I would go with the under. I would bet the under um, Cooper Cup, you know, Stafford and, and, and Cup. That's just like a marriage made in heaven, man. So, you know, the 89 and a half. I know that seems like an awful lot of yardage, an awful lot of yardage. But I mean, I I'd be I'd be I think it would be a safe bet with 89 and a half and, and going with the over on that. I would definitely go with the over on that. Now the Puka uh Nakua, you know, his 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 reps have been going down a little well, his passing numbers have been going down with the addition of Cooper Cup. But um I I would go with the under with that, but you know, Tutu Atwell, I think it's easy to go with 20, 28 and a half and and and, and bet the over with that. Yeah, it's going to be tough because Puka's numbers, I lost money on Puka last week because you don't really he, – he, he, he can get 70, 80 yards, and then he can get 30 yards depending on how much they go to Cooper Cup. So there's been a lot of inconsistencies yep. with Puka since Cooper Cup mm-hmm. has gotten back. Uh, Deb, what do you like in this game? I, I'm excited for this game because I think it's going to be a really good coaching matchup. Um, but like you just mentioned, Bear, like what are the Steelers? I still don't know their identity. You know, we talked about them. I always think back to week one. When we're talking about the Steelers and how it was almost similar to the Bears, like I thought they were going to take a massive step forward this season. And, you know, with the Bears, it's like, obviously, no, they almost took a step backwards if that was even possible. With the Steelers, it's like, well, have they? It's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes they look like they have. Sometimes they look like they haven't. The one thing I do know for sure is that Mike Tomlin is a hell of a coach. Um, So I don't think that they're going to let the Rams, you know, trounce on them but i do think the rams are going to ultimately win and cover because the spread's not that big three point spread so i like the rams winning and covering um but i think it'll be a closer game i could see the rams winning by like six or or seven points in this one um if i do have a prop especially on the Steelers side i like george pickens and you know a big reason i like the rams to win is they just have so many more options uh, matthew stafford does to to get the ball to he has puka he has cooper cup where Steelers, you have like George Pickens, who's, you know, the main target uh, receiving wise. But that's why I like him to, you know, show out and get at least one touchdown today or today uh, on Sunday. But I do like the Rams to ultimately win this one. I think Higby's a, a, a good bet also. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, with that. I, I like the Rams to win. Mm-hmm. I like the Rams to win in this game. Um, Cooper Cup, seven and a half receptions also. 
That's a bet that I'm liking. Seven and a half receptions. I think Cooper Cup gets seven and a half over and with the 89 and a half. And Easy. I like George Pickens. <laughs> Yeah, and I like George Pickens to go over 50 and a half. George Pickens is is Kenny Pickett's only real safety value. He had 130 uh, yards on six catches last week, so I can he continues to get open, and Kenny Pickett tries to find him whenever he can. So those are some of the prop bets. So those are some of the player bets that I like, and I would parlay those bets. I don't know what y'all would think. If we get, get a Sean game, same game parlay real quick, what do y'all think about parlaying those bets together? Have Cooper Cup over – and as I'm looking, it changed one yard for some reason. So it's now 90 and a half, not 89 and a half. Cooper Cup, 90 and a half. <laughs> Cooper Cup, seven and a half catches. Uh, George Pickens, over 50, 50 and a half uh, yards when it comes to receiving. So how would y'all like to parlay that into a one same game parlay? I'll do That'd it. That'd be easy. Sure. Yeah, that'd be easy, you know, because, I mean, you're talking about weapons that, that, uh, have shown, you know, some consistency throughout the weeks, man. So I, I think it'll be a safe bet. All right, let's 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 move on to the next game. Cardinals Seahawks. <laughs> and originally, I want to say two weeks ago, guys, we were like, but the Cardinals are scrappy and competitive, and they, they keep it close every game. But in the last two, three weeks, it's been get out of here, little kid. So they've been getting little, <laughs> little, little boyed and sunned over the last few weeks. They're taking on the Seahawks team that's playing good football. The Seahawks, seven and a half favored by over under 44 and a half uh the money line is seattle minus 350 arizona plus 280 dad we'll start with you on this one what do you like out of this game i love seattle covering uh the seven and a half points i mean they're coming off kind of like a pretty bleh performance last week um that they i think could have one, they could have beat the Bengals. They just had a few sloppy mistakes, um, especially, you know, in the red zone. I think they'll look to bounce back. The Cardinals, like, I feel like they beat the Cowboys and everyone was like, oh, they're scrappier and they kept a few games close. But then, you know, the last few weeks, they've really shown us their true colors. Um, and especially yeah. with the loss of James Conner, like, the Cardinals aren't good. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are are low-key pretty, pretty good um, offensively. You know, they're explosive. I don't see how a Cardinals defense can really contain this Seahawks offense. Um, so yeah, I like the Seahawks winning this one. I talked about a survivor pool pick and I would say that I'm torn between the bills and Seattle as my like definite winner in week seven. Two good picks <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, great <laughs> picks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bree Bro Brooks, what do you see in this game? Yeah. I, I think that Seattle will cover on that. And then, you know, just looking at, you know, I love looking at the tight end position and, and Noah Font at uh, 22 and a half. I mean, uh, to me, Geno Smith gets with him all day long. Um, uh, one position that I, I, you know, I don't think um, will pay dividends at this point is uh, DK Metcalf because he always he always has a tough one against that defense for some reason. You know, going back and forth, they just don't like DK Metcalf at all. So. I will go with the under 50, uh, 58 and a half. And uh, Tyler Lockett, you know, just because he's my Kansas State guy. Uh, I'm going to go with the over with him, 55 and a half. Yeah, I, I'm with y'all on the same thing. Again, I think Seattle covers the spread at seven and a half. And because of that, I like Kenny Walker, the third, to, to get, get some rushing yards, to get it done. I like him to go over 71 and a half because, again, I think this is going to be – a sizable margin in the fourth quarter. So, I, and again, Kenny Walker has low-key had a really good season so far and has played well. So yep. I would I would uh, parlay him to go for over 71 in the yards and to get an anytime TD. Give me an anytime tutty for like Kenny that. Walker to have a solid game against the Arizona Carters. It's going to be a blowout. He's going to get the ball a lot in the second half. He's always involved in the offense. And again, he's going to score one of those things, in my opinion. So that's sort of what I like in this game. So let's go to the next game. Uh, guys, like I, the Packers Broncos, like what are we like? Are we just talking about firings at this point? Like Sean Payton, can you please just go back to the booth, dog? Like, can you just go back analyzing games? Because you ain't really doing nothing over in Denver, and that defense that which was so good for so many years is absolutely awful, shameful, and pitiful. But it's 
It's not like the Green Bay Packers have been taking advantage of teams. So this is a game they can actually potentially win. And it shows in the money line because Green Bay is favored to win this game only by a point. All right. It's minus one. The over under is 45. I don't know how that much offense is going to be scored in this game. And a money line for Green Bay to win is minus 115. Denver minus one and a half. B Brooks. Uh, it could be a snore fest. What do you got in this game? Uh, it will be a snore fest, but I think this is a game where you know, Aaron Jones finally takes over and, and, and becomes a running back. I, I, I thought it was going to be two games ago. Uh, 50 and a half yards. I, I say that. Packers go with the over. Minus one. I just think that's just too close. This Broncos team doesn't have any defense. They can't stop anybody. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, because Peyton's my guy. Peyton is my guy. You know what I'm saying? He was my quarterback coach uh, my rookie year of, with, with, this, with, the, uh, with the Eagles. And you know, I would have never thought that he would uh, he would be doing what he's doing right now and coaching a team that's undisciplined, lacks explosiveness, lacks physicality. I mean, so I can't see them doing anything. I like um, I, I I do like you know receiving yards right now with uh, Romeo Dobbs at thirty eight and a half. Um, you know, they finally get it together. Jerry Judy, I would go with the under forty five and a half. He just he just had nothing anything and. And um, it, it, it's this this will be a sure up, don't don't say nothing about Jerry. He went after Steve Smith, so he he <laughs> said something slick about Steve Smith. He might say something about you too, B Brooks. <laughs> Bro, Steve Smith would wring his neck. You know, what I'm saying if Steve is a little, <laughs> little thicker right now too. He's a little thicker than he is right now. He will choke him, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> he will choke him. But yeah, I, I would I would I would go. I would, the only props I would probably go with uh is um Romeo Dobbs. 38 and a half. And then Christian Watson, uh, 53 and a half. I, I would go with that also. Love finally makes what you got. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Packers, um, have definitely, you know, fallen off Jordan love just their offense seems like it's kind of a mess, but what better team to, you know, get right against and, and look better than you have than the team that's allowing the most total opposing yards in the Broncos defense. So, um, I mean, I think the Packers will likely win this one because the Broncos are just a complete and total mess. Like, the, I just feel like they are a hopeless case right now. Um, I do like the Packers doing more, getting up early, and then, you know, doing more in the run game. But I'm not going to do anything specific in terms of player props in this one. I honestly did, like, I, I don't think this game is going to be very pretty to watch. I don't think it's going to be very fun to watch. Um, but if I'm picking a side, I'm going to pick the Packers in this one. It's like, do I have, have no choice? Any? Right, right. You have says, no choice. I, <laughs> it's one of those things. Like we want to show, so we got to pick one. I, I honestly don't think mm. either one of us may end up betting on this game at all. I'm be honest with y'all because of, of how putrid both of these teams are. It's one of those things. Like, can I bet the under on everything? To our next game is the Kansas City Chiefs and it's in the Chargers. I was about to say San Diego. I, I'm going to say San Diego anyway. It's the San Diego Chargers as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> KC favorite in this game, five and a half. The over-under is 48. KC minus 250. Chargers plus 195. Now, again, the Chargers have been a disappointment, to, to, to keep it frank. I, I had Justin Herbert being in a conversation for MVP this year, and he's been anything but that. The Chargers are a team that you know, should have won, should have won 10, 11, 12 games, should have been that type of team, but have underperformed. Once again, usually Justin Herbert, you can plug in for 5,000 yards passing, 4,800 yards passing. He hasn't been that. A lot of his props have been under when it comes to passing so far this season, but they expect this game to have a lot of points and a lot of yards. Patrick Mahomes, uh, his over under when it comes to yardage is 277 and a half. Justin Herbert's is wow. 267 and a half. So a lot of yards they think are going to be thrown out in this game. Uh, B Brooks, I'll start with you. Where do you think this thing goes? Do you think the Chargers even have a chance? Because again, KC favored in a big way in this game. I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, I, I think that the the Chiefs have underachieved this, this season also. I, they're not playing at the level I thought they were going to play at. But it's saying that I, I would still have to go with, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, and the Chiefs winning. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll take I'll take the points on it also. Um, when I look at it, as far as a safe bet to me, Isaiah Pacheco has showed that he is a lot better than even I saw in the Super Bowl. 
this guy can really play, man. I don't, I don't see how he was not drafted out of, you know, Rutgers, you know, or, or that low at Rutgers because he he is a dominant force in the passing and re- um, receiving yards and rushing yards. So I think sixty two and a half is is easy. He go with the over, and then you know when you look at his um his um receiving yards, fifteen and a half. That's like taking candy from a baby, man. Come on now, he's gonna do that easily. So I think he's that much of a weapon in that offense that you don't have to worry about that. So I'll say that's a safe bet. Another safe bet, you know, go with, um, you know, with, with Justin Herbert and, you know, Ke- Keenan Allen, 77 and a half. Keenan still got it, man. He an old man, but he still got it, man. So 77 and a half, I think it's, he'll have a, he'll have, he'll probably have a hundred yards this game for sure. A hundred yards, just because he's been that guy for them for so long. So I'll, I'll definitely go with that. I will go with the under as a, pertains to, to Tony, man. Kadarius Tony is – bro, he, he drops more – he drops more passes than than any receiver I've seen in the league, bro. You know, so I mean, I would go with the under with him. Easy. Oh, my – it's, it's been since week one. I, everyone swore that Kadarius Tony was going to be something, and that's why the the, char, the Chiefs had to go trade for McCall Hardman, get him in there because Kadarius has been such a disappointment. McCall Hardman should be able to come in and play – right away and give a boost to this Kansas City Chiefs offense. Dev, what do you think in this game? Yeah, I'm laughing because I remember uh, after their week one loss, the the Chiefs week one loss, we were all like, well, Kadarius Tony, like that's going to be his worst game of the season. <laughs> you know, it's only up <laughs> from here for, for Tony. Um, and here we are in week seven. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I it's hard. I agree with you, Barrett. I think that the Chiefs have underperformed. Um, I mean, as Super Bowl champions, you know, coming into this season as a whole, a lot of their games have been really tight. Um, but I do think, just given the schedule, and the Chargers have been underperforming as well. But like, just really not. Like, I'm surprised that their head coach even still has a job, um, given the talent that he has to work with. Uh, and oh yeah, for sure. And, how it reflects but i do like the chiefs in this one they have extent they're coming off extended rest where the chargers have short rest after you know dropping that game to the cowboys last monday or this past monday um so they're going to be tired you know they're heading into arrowhead we know what a home field advantage that is for the chiefs uh and the chiefs are clearly you know looking to work on their passing game by bringing in new wide receivers um it's going to be an area of focus so I think with Andy Reid, with Patrick Mahomes, you just can never underestimate that passing attack. So um, I like the Chiefs winning this one and covering. Yeah, and, and we can go with that. We we can go with um, Mr. S- Mr. Swift. I'm not, I'm not talking about DeAndre. I'm talking about Travis. We, I was trying to not much. mention it, Sean. I was literally ah! like, I'm not going to mention <laughs> Travis Kelsey because I know where it's going to go. <laughs> I had to. I had to. I mean, I mean, your girl's everywhere. She's at every game. So um, he, again, 60, 73 and a half when it comes to passing, go over. Six and a half when it comes to receptions, go over. That's where you lean it. That's where you're going to go. You, you, you know, Travis is going to get eight catches for 80 yards at the very least. So I think they're going to focus on that, especially against a, a off uh, defense in the Chargers that they ain't it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They ain't they ain't really stopping people like that. They've been in some nope. some offensive games, and I don't think they'll be able to stop the Kansas City Chiefs from doing what they need to do and stop their main target. So I like uh, th- that particular prop, just every Travis Kelsey uh, prop in general in that game. But I, you know, I, I can see the Chargers covering in this game, but I think the Kansas City Chiefs definitely win this game, and 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 it's mm-hmm. going to be again a situation when the Chargers go. All right, dog, like the, the time is ticking on our coach. I, just like you said, Deb, like, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if y'all end up going two and six or even three and six, you got to be out of here, kid. So, and even if that doesn't happen, if they don't make the playoffs, he's out. Uh, so yeah. that they, they are fighting for that man's job right now. So, but I think we're all on the Kansas City Chiefs. So let's move on to, to the game of the week, Dolphins Eagles. Both teams are five and one. Five teams, I believe, are tied at five and one when it comes to the best record in the league. The the Dolphins have been playing well. The Eagles coming off a, a, a loss that just can't happen, right? Did you just just you can't have that type of loss against a New York Jets team with Zach Wilson? That just 
can't ever happen. They didn't play well enough, and I know they can't play well enough. But So I think they're going to bounce back, but they got to do so against a really good team, a really good explosive offense. Dev, I'll start with you here again. Let's, let me tell you what it is first. The Eagles favoring this game two and a half because it's in Philadelphia. The over-under is 51 and a half. What do you like in this game, Dev? So I was and still am shocked to see the Eagles favored in this one. But then I realized, you know, I'm an Eagles fan and clearly biased and I'm freaking <laughs> out and spiraling after one loss. Um, but uh, it was a bad loss uh, to the Jets, who I do know play everyone tight. The Dolphins are terrifying. So... At the start of this week, I would have told you, like, no way the Eagles win this. There's no way they can contain Tyreek Hill and every bit of that uh, very formidable Miami offense. But the more I look at this matchup, the more I think that this can be a closer game. It all comes down to the Eagles offense really being able to get touchdowns, not settle for field goals, put up touchdowns and you know convert and score when you're in the red zone they have their red zone offense has been absolutely terrible um and also get their defensive guys back from injury and it's looking like that is the case and that also has made me feel a bit more optimistic about this game so it's looking like Jalen Carter will be back it's looking like Darius Slay will be back which is massive um Lane Johnson is expected to play which is also massive on the offensive side of the ball so Look, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair for both of these teams. But I think the Eagles can win, and I think the Eagles can cover the two-and-a-half points. Plus, they're playing at home okay. in their Kelly Green jerseys. The crowd's going to be crazy. That's it right there. I mean, they're playing in their Kelly Green jerseys. The last time you can't the lose Kelly the Kelly Green, Green game. Exactly. The last time... <laughs> The Eagles had their Kelly Green jersey on on a primetime game was against the Denver Broncos back in 1995. And yours truly was starting left tackle. And we won the Ooh. game. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I just like I like the props, you know, for, for rushing with DeAndre Swift with 61 and a half. I cannot believe it. And it was a travesty that they only have 14 carries to running backs against the Jets. And the Jets were the number 29th ranked run defense on stopping the run. And you only had 14 carries. So they overcorrect everything. So I think they're going to overcorrect. Swift gets the ball a lot. And um, he'll have over he'll have over uh, 61 and a half yards rushing. Um, and, and he has to because it's imperative that he does to win the game. They have to outrush him, keep that offense on the other side of the field, off the field. And, uh, you know, time possession. I also say that Jalen Hurts, since he had a poor game this last game, takes control of the game. He'll have over 46 and a half yards rushing in this game simply by him going and, and, and keeping the chains move with first downs and his ability to go run the ball and actually, you know, dictate the tempo of the game. Um, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill, 95 and a half. I'm going with the under. Yeah, I said it. I'm going with the under. I'm going with that. So here's my question for you, Barrett. Who's going to be matched up with Tyreek Hill? Like that, like, I just don't know, aside from Bradbury and Slay, who has the key. And I don't even know if either of them have the ability to contain Tyreek Hill. I don't know if anyone in the NFL has the ability to fully contain Tyreek Hill. Why do why you want to get personal? Why just go get personal with <laughs> me like that? No, um, you know, I, I, think they, I think they're going to devise a plan. They're going to do a little matchup zone against him you know when he goes into a certain zone who's ever in that zone is going to have to double up on him and slow him down a little bit i think the key to the game is those guys up front controlling the control of the trenches you know and it's not necessarily uh sacking to him but i think it's more so hitting him and if they don't get to him get their hands up to shut them passing lanes down and i think they're going to be more of a force in stopping tyreek hill than anything if they can get their hands up knock balls down because it's a shorter quarterback I think it'll go well in them, and it'll uh, it'll it'll be a, a better game because of that. Oh, guys, guys! I hope you're right. Guys. I hope you're right, guys. I don't, come on, I listen. <laughs> as y'all know, as we all three of us cover the Philadelphia Eagles, anytime they fe faced a legit quarterback over the last two years, it's been toast. Whether they win or lose the game, it's been. Host. I don't care if it's Darius Slay. I don't care if it's James Bradbury. It's been 
They've made every single quarterback look a level above what they really are. I mean, they made Zach Wilson look like he was competent, right? And Zach Wilson has played competent football. I don't want to disrespect, but they made him look a level above than what he should have looked last week. So now you throw in Tua in there, who's just lighting it up. Like Darius Slay and those guys, have, they've been dominant when it comes to the passing game in one half this entire season, in my opinion, as the second half against the Rams. So I don't think they can contain anything. To me, the 51 and a half is going to be easy money over. Right? Like, I think this is going to be a shootout <laughs> team. This is going to be a shootout. Miami can't stop anybody. And anytime the Philadelphia Eagles have to face a real deal quarterback, that team gets over 300 yards. So with that said, to a 272 and a half, I'm going over. I think he throws for more than that. I, I just think this is going to be a game with a lot of offense. It's going. We're going to be incredibly frustrated with the Eagles' defense letting up a lot of points, and they're going to have to sort of own the time of possession at the same time. So I'm with you on Jalen Hurts getting the over on also rushing because Jalen Hurts has shown, like, all right, let me get out of the pocket. Let me run a little bit. Let me create first downs in that way. So I think Jalen Hurts is going to be able to do that. But I think this is an incredibly tough spot. Last week I said it's it's mandatory for them to beat the Jets before they get into this tough stretch that the Eagles are going to get into. And I think for the Eagles, the toughest game of the stretch is this game based on the defense and what they do against really good quarterbacks and really good explosive offenses. So I actually like the Miami Dolphins to win in this game just because I just haven't, I don't know about y'all, I just haven't seen the ability to stop a legit quarterback from the Eagles yet, despite, you know, the defensive line getting sacks and, and uh, Sean Reddick starting, starting to finally really play ball over the last couple of games. But again, over. I don't know. How, how do y'all feel about the 51 and a half? Because I think, again, I'll start with you, Deb. I think that's a clear over um, when it comes to these two teams. I mean, I, I agree with you on the over. Um, it's inevitable that that Miami offense is going to score. The key to this game is the Eagles just have to score back. Like they have to put up just as many points if and then more than the Dolphins if they want to have a chance at winning. Um and that's why I said, you know, they need to go for the touchdowns. And I feel like every single game so far this season, this Eagles offense, it just they they do these beautiful drives down the field and then they settle for a field goal. And it's so infuriating um, where the Dolphins seem to be like one of the only teams in the league right now who are able to you know perform and, and get touchdowns when they're in the red zone. So I I think that, you know, you mentioned the Eagles defense making Zach Wilson look good. I actually think the Eagles defense did well, you know, all things considered last week against the Jets, they, yep. it was the offense that really let the Eagles down. So I think it's really on the offense in this Sunday night game to, to kind of say like, all right, defense, like we got you guys. Cause the defense can only do so much, especially with the injuries. Like for goodness sake, I think they, they re-signed Josiah Scott. Like that me like you are desperate, right? In the secondary, <laughs> if you are, are re-signing a guy like Josiah Scott, no disrespect. You got Josh Job, like I feel like it's like that meme of the water coming out and someone's like trying to put tape on it to stop it. Like that is the Eagles defense <laughs> trying to stop this Miami offense. Yeah. So the Eagles have to put up just as many points and then more. So what happens naturally, the over is going to hit. So I agree with you. Sean. Yeah, there's going to be a lot, a lot of points and a lot, a lot of yards. Let's